Hello, hi, welcome to the Daily Creative Challenge. It is day six of our Daily Creative Challenges. We're learning Illustrator basics. Uh, if you're just joining us for the first time, hi, hello. My name is Andrew Hockrottle. Um, I will be your host and guide. Uh, you can follow me anywhere on Behance, Twitter, whatever you want, Instagram at hawk.co, H-O-C-H-D-O-T-C-O, -O -O, no punctuation in there. And as we get started, we are doing something very special with the challenges this week. If you are tuning in live, go here right now, bit.ly slash AI Discord. We are going to be doing a live Q&A for the last 10 minutes of the show. We'll bring you live onto the show here on Adobe Live, and you can ask any questions that you have from past challenges, from the current challenge and the lesson that we're doing today so that we can share information, we can all get on the same page and get some help live on the show. So go ahead, click on that link, join our Discord, and then I want you to scroll down here and join this. It is the Hangout and Feedback. Uh, you're gonna need to scroll all the way to the bottom and then click on Hangout and Feedback. Join that channel and I will start that in about 15 minutes. We'll get started with a live Q&A. Uh, it will start here, it will live here and exist on the live stream. Last week we were going over to Discord, but we will be in Discord and also live streaming here so we can all be a part of the knowledge that we're sharing. All right, let's go ahead and hop into our lesson. Today, we are covering Illustrator Basics. We are continuing our series. Um, you can grab your source files, which you do need, over at behance.net slash challenge slash illustrator. We're gonna scroll down here and do reshape text, which is what we are doing today. We're gonna to go ahead and get started, and that will give you our source file that you can open over in Adobe Illustrator. All right, let's get started and learn about augmenting and reshaping type in Adobe Illustrator. In past challenges, we have used type, uh, right, to stay live, we've used the touch type tool. Today, we're going to convert that type into outlines and use it and treat it as if it was shapes and we can rework it to make it something really crazy and really fun. So let's go ahead and hop into Adobe Illustrator. Here we are and our challenge today is to reshape text in creative ways using outlines and the direct selection tool. Now I have typed something out for you. If you haven't synced it, there should be a pop-up that says there's a missing font. You can go ahead and sync that from the Adobe Creative Cloud uh, and it will allow you to have that font. It will fill it in for you. Magic. I also have our type from the last challenge. If you're continuing in the series, you can use that type as well. It will be very easy. So the first thing that I am going to show you is how to augment type, right? Right now, this is live type. Uh, we can come in here and type in cool beans if we wanted to, which is something I like to say. Um, we can actually, let's do cool type. You can type in whatever you want. It is live type. And you can see there at the bottom, the hotkeys and the keys that I am using, just in case you need a little insider information on those hotkeys. Uh, I'm using T to grab the type tool. And using the type tool, we can change the type, just like we saw. But we're gonna do something a little bit different right now. We're gonna take this type, and instead of making it live type, we're going to go to object, expand, and then we're gonna expand object and fill and hit okay. Whoa, uh, you can see something happened right there is now we have all of these little anchor points and now these are converted into shapes. So just like we've done in the past where we made basic shapes like a rectangle over here, you can see this rectangle has those anchor points on the edges, right? Right there, all of those anchor points. And now this Y is the same. It has anchor points right along those edges as well. So we can go in and actually augment those using the direct selection tool. The problem with creating outlines, if you need to make any changes to your type, do it before you create outlines because once the outlines are created, you cannot go back and change what it says. You can't type on this anymore. They're basically just shapes. So we're gonna go in here and we are going to uh, augment these anchor points. Uh, now you can see down at the bottom a blank bar. That's me holding the space button to grab the artboard and move it around. Uh, if I hit V, that is just the selection tool. And A is the direct selection tool, which is what we're going to use right now. And that is right over here. It is the white. Uh, and keep the live type. Yes, sometimes we need to not keep the live type though. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change the circles of these letters. Now I want to make a little bit of a funky O and I need to keep that consistent throughout all the letters. So what I can do is grab the direct selection tool and I'm going to grab this anchor point. 
I'm then going to hold shift and hit down and you can see that it moves it down by 10 pixels. So I want it to be a little more squatty. Now, the problem is I actually want to augment all of the rounded letters. And I know that the C, the O, and the O are all rounded letters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the direct selection tool, which is right here, A, and I'm going to hold shift and just click. And you can see those anchor points are showing up right there. Uh, I am selecting them. If you hover over, it will show you where an anchor point is. It'll pop up saying anchor right there. So I'm gonna select all the top ones and then hit shift and down. You can see now it's augmented all of those anchor points at the same time. So you can augment a bunch of anchor points at the same time, which is really helpful when you're trying to transform type. From here, I'm going to grab the bottom anchor points as well. And I'm gonna move those up, holding shift and hitting up. So there we go, we've got a little bit more of a squatty look to it. Uh, and something else that we can do is maybe we want to start to join some of these letters, uh, play around with how they interact with each other. And so maybe we want to uh, go ahead and bring this over here. We can simply click and we're just using the selection tool here. Uh, if we use the selection tool, it will select all of them. So if you want to, you can right click and hit ungroup and that will allow you to do each of the letters individually. So we're gonna click and drag this over here and kind of just align it up by eye. And then I'm going to hold shift and pull it over this way. Now you'll see something happening there and that is that purple line popping up. The purple line is a smart guide and that will help us. If you don't have those, you can go to view and then come down to guides and then turn on uh, smart guides. Oh, that is not where smart guides are. Smart guides, where are smart guides? I have lost Smart guides, there they are. Uh, right down in the middle, you can turn on your smart guides right there and they will pop up. Uh, now something else that smart guides can do is they can actually pull out at an angle. So let's say we want this Y to have a little bit more of a reach to it. What we can do is we're gonna grab our direct selection tool and just like we were messing around and playing with the other anchor points, we're gonna grab this direct selection tool and then we're going to click and drag and look at that, it is following the line extension. This is a really great tool that was added semi-recently, so we can add some good dimension to this Y. And again, because it is just a shape, we can edit those anchor points using the direct selection tool. We're gonna keep this going all the way out here until it's locked in. You can see that it's locked in the horizontal of that anchor point, as well as the diagonal of that anchor point. And now we have some really fun uh, things happening with that Y. Now we also can use the bounding box to edit each of these letters as well. We can grab V for the move tool and the selection tool. And here with it selected, we can have our bounding box on. That's just these little nodes on the sides. And we're gonna click and drag holding shift to keep it proportionate. If we click and drag, it's just gonna make it really wonky. So we're gonna hold shift and it will keep it in the proportions that that letter means to be displayed. And we're gonna bring it down this way and maybe tuck it in right here. Let's make that a little bit smaller so it follows that Y. There we go, looks pretty fun. Now this E, I maybe want to match part of this, uh, this kind of curve here. And what we can do is we're just gonna use the selection tool and we're gonna bring it up here so it is matched. We'll shrink it down just a little bit. And then we're actually going to use the shear tool here. And this is gonna be a fun one. I'm gonna zoom in and we're gonna grab the selection tool and just drag this E right over there. You can see that it locks in with that smart guide. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're going to use the shear tool. We learned about this in a past lesson, but we're gonna leverage it here to augment some type to make it really fun. So the shear tool is right underneath the scale tool right there. And we're gonna click on the shear tool and you'll see that our pin or this little green space is hitting right in the middle. Now we don't want that. We actually wanna shear from this point. Remember, we are putting a thumbtack in the letter and then we are shearing it from that thumbtack. So we wanna put the tack where they overlap right here. And then I'm going to grab this bottom anchor point that you can see uh, and click and drag. And you can see now it is shearing from that anchor point on the top. I'm just gonna drag it all the way over until it intersects with that line. And now you can see we have perfectly matched that line of the Y augmenting this letter by using the shear tool because it is literally just, uh, it is just a shape. We're gonna move this over a bit holding shift and hitting the right arrows so we have some nice angles happening here. 
And then maybe I want to move the E a little bit more to the left, right? It feels like it's going out a little bit too far. Uh, I'm going to use a selection tool that we haven't covered yet, and that is the lasso tool, uh, something that is used a lot in Photoshop, but also exists here in Illustrator. If you want to select a bunch of different points, you can hit Q. Uh, or just select right here underneath the direct selection tool. And we're going to click and drag our selection all the way out. Check that out. And everything that is within that selection, every anchor point will be selected. So now we can just move them using shift and left. So there we go. That look, that E is looking pretty good to me. And now we've got some cool type happening there. Uh, maybe we want to do the same thing with the T or maybe we want to join them together and just move this T over. All right, sure. That's looking pretty cool. Uh, maybe these O's, we want to overlap a little bit so that they go together. Let's actually just overlap. Oh, we won't be able to overlap all of those. That won't work. So let's pull that there. And then maybe the L just comes right here. And then you can click and drag out a rectangle over the area that you would like to select. So we can click and drag over the area we want to select and just bring it over here. Now, something that we can also do that might be a little bit fun is you can use the scale tools with certain anchor points selected. Watch what happens here. We're going to use the direct select tool and we're just going to select all of these top points on the O as well as the bottom points on the O. So we're doing the top and the bottom points of the O. Now we're going to grab the scale tool and watch what happens. As we click and drag out, it is going to move the top points up and the bottom points down. So watch what happens. When we click and drag, we're holding shift here. It's pulling those points and it's making these letters real wonky. Uh, so let's just go ahead and pull those in, right? Really crazy. Uh, something else that we can do to do it proportionally is we can go into object, transform, and transform each. Uh, this, I think, should transform each of them, yes, individually. Uh, and that way, maybe we want it to just go, whoa, Let's hit the wrong buttons there. Uh, maybe we want it to go vertical just a little bit. Let's go ahead and do 80% and it's gonna bring it down a little bit. Uh, maybe we want it to be 110 and it will squeeze those out real nice, right? Kind of fun. Uh, let's grab these and just squish them down hitting Alt or Option. Um, here it is going top to bottom. If we hold Alt or Option, it will do the top and the bottom, both sides. And we're just gonna line it up a little bit above those letters. Now, something that you want to do when you are working with type is you want to make sure that the rounded letters on top are a little bit higher than the flat letters on top. Now, as we look at these, you can see that it looks like these are pretty much even. But if we grab a ruler, check this out, uh, I'm going to go to view and turn on rulers right here. Uh, I just hit command R. We're going to click on this ruler and bring it down. And you can see that these rounded letters are a little bit above where the flat letters are. And that's kind of what we want there. So you can hit control and just, uh, what's that called? Parenthesis? Colon. That's what that's called. Uh, control and colon, and it will turn off that guide. But you can see it's a little bit higher. But when we look at it here, it looks like it's even. And that's visual, right? That's uh, doing the type custom visual so that it aligns to the eye and not necessarily to the math. So what I want you to do is create some cool type, make it super crazy. Um, and again, we have a live type here. Just to recap, we have live type, and then we're going to go to object, expand, and then hit OK. And that will expand this type into shapes. From there, we can use the selection tools to right click and ungroup it. We can move these around. We can stretch these using the bounding box as well. And we can also come in with the direct selection tool, which is A, and move these anchor points. It will follow along a line extension if we want to give it some unique flair uh, and a little bit of fun. So maybe let's do that. Let's move some of these anchor points around to make these letters even more crazy than they were before. You also can grab a line instead of grabbing the anchor point and grabbing that full line. So let's grab the line on this here. We can click and drag and it will move that full line out instead of just those anchor points. So maybe we want to do something crazy like that or the top of the A goes up a little bit. You can move lines as well as anchor points using those direct selection tools. So really fun today to create some crazy custom type. And if you have questions, you're in luck. Uh, you can ask questions right now from 
any of our challenges. I'd love to answer some questions about this one. I know we covered a lot. And where you're going to do that is you are going to go right over here to Hangout and Feedback. You're going to our Discord, which is the link happening right over there, bit.ly slash AI Discord. And I'm going to start the Hangout and Feedback. If you scroll all the way down to Voice Chat and Live, this Hangout and Feedback channel is where we're going to be for about the next 10 minutes, right? A new format, it's gonna be something kinda cool. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to click right here on Hangout and Feedback, and we are going to, oh, we've started it. There we go. Uh, we are here and I believe that it is started. Let me go ahead and join this. Let's request to speak because I will be the speaker here. Uh, you can join the Discord. If you have any questions, just go ahead and raise your hand and we'll bring you on audio. You also can join the stage chat that's happening right here, uh, right above. And the stage chat is where we can talk. If you don't want to come on audio, you can also ask some questions there. Um, so. Let's see here. I am going to get access to uh, speak in this channel uh, and it will bring me up top and then we will be able to get this started. Uh, so here we go right here bit.ly slash AI discord. That is where we are going to be.